Hi, welcome to True Audio with Johnny Truesdale. I am Johnny Truesdale, and this is episode one. So what is this series going to be about? Well, it's going to be a weekly series about a different audio subject. I'm going to pick the audio subjects in the beginning, but in the future, I will be taking requests. So the first episode that we're going to talk about here is accessing or disk access in Pro Tools. So without further ado, here's episode one. All right, here we are in Pro Tools. And uh, first, uh, we're going to take a look at uh, what we have in the session. And then I'm going to show you a few things to get better disk access, uh, disk usage, disk access activity. There's many things that we could call this. Basically, uh, Pro Tools talks to your disk where you're writing your audio and has to transfer uh, back and forth between the DAW itself and the disk that it's reading from. So if there's too much going on, it can have issues. It takes up a lot of memory and so forth and so on. Um, so anything in blue here is, is an audio track. And uh, if we look over here, in these numbers you have one over here and as we scroll down we'll scroll down all the way down here to 76 we take out the one in the middle which is our master track that's not our audio track and that gives us 75 tracks so I know you say Johnny well I don't have 76 tracks I don't deal with that my clients don't have 76 tracks I I'm a home producer I don't make that many tracks so forth and so on um, you will. You'll get them eventually uh, as a mix engineer. Uh, again, I know I forgot to mention this. this. is probably more of a mixing thing, but you could do this at any time if you feel uh, you're getting your uh, disk activity is too high and you're getting errors as a result. Um, you should always write to an external drive uh, anyway. Uh, I'm using a Mac Mini with a solid state drive in it. Um, here's the specs on my Mac Mini. It's um, 2.6 Intel Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM. I'm using Pro Tools here, uh, version 11.3.1, okay? So this is what you're dealing with. This is what I'm dealing with here. I have an external hard drive. Uh, it's a Lacey Thunderbolt hard drive that I'm accessing from. So my system is, is fairly fast, and it, and it really won't have any problems with 75 tracks, but I can make it better, and as, as you should, um, it just makes it a, a little bit easier to deal with. I also think of it in, as an organization thing as well so that you can organize your tracks a little better. The layout is a little better instead of seeing all blue here or whatever colors that you're actually using. Uh, we'll talk about color coding tracks and stuff like that in another tutorial. So um, the next thing I want to talk about is what's going on with the system. This is the session setup. But this tells me um, I'm using 48, 24, 48 kilohertz is the sample rate, and 24 bit is my bit depth. Uh, this is a fairly normal one. You can get 44, 24, 48, 24, 88, 24, 96, 24. Um, there's two others, and we'll talk about sample rates in a, in another tutorial as well. But the higher the sample rate and bit depth. The larger the files are, uh, the more the computer has to work for disk access. Okay, so 4824 is not an incredibly high one, and you'll see actually what this does to the computer when I play it back. So let me close this, and we're going to bring up our system usage. So I'll click on this window right here, and I'll scroll all the way down to system usage. Again, window, system usage. So here we are here. And you could see this comes up. And I'll bring this to the middle. I'm going to play this from somewhere in the song. It really doesn't matter where I play it in the song because I have all 75 tracks going on at once here. So let me press play. And you could see it It shot up to 40-some percent. It jumps all the way to 50-some to a certain degree here. So let me stop it, and you'll see it. It'll go all the way back down again. Let me do it again and watch right here. Here it goes. It shoots all the way back up to 40-something, 50-something. Um, like I said, my, my computer's fairly fairly fast, so 
on a slower computer, this would really lag a slower computer. So let me stop this. I'm going to put this over here for now, and then I'm going to show you um, a couple other things. The first thing we're going to talk about is Zoom. And um, over here is a button that you need to press. This is keyboard focus. In Pro Tools, it's keyboard focus. It enables you to use um, one key commands to, to achieve certain zoom settings that we're going to do and so forth. Okay. But the first thing I want to talk about is um, vertical zoom. And this is our default zoom. If we've zoomed out, um, this is the whole entire session. Okay. So there's nothing after it, just so you know. Um, I'm zoomed all the way out. I also like to uh, get my uh, track height at least at medium when I go through this. That way I can see everything that's going on. So I held down option, I click here, and I go to medium. Now, um, as you can see, some of these are a little small. So focus on this area right here when I do ver vertical zoom. You could see this. I can see that there's audio there. But if I go all the way out, it looks like there's no audio at all. It looks like a straight line. I'm not seeing audio. I'm letting my eyes deceive me. And um, that's not good as an audio engineer to ever rely on your eyes entirely. You should always listen to stuff. Um, but if you zoom way in on the vertical zoom here, which is option command brackets, you can, it looks like a lot of this stuff is clipping because I got brick bricks over here. Um, but it's not. But this gives you an idea of where music isn't. Music is not playing right here at all. Um, if I press it right here, you'll see I'm not getting anything on the meters. Um, because I'm zoomed in, you can see that and it's a, it's a little easier uh, to see. But you always be careful and make sure that you're zoomed way in. Like I said, sometimes I'll zoom all the way in or, or really far like I am right now, which is not quite all the way, but it's, it's, it's pretty far. Now, um, let me show you some of these shortcuts here. So I'll start on this top track here, and I'll click about right here, and I'll hit the letter A. And the letter A stands for a trim clip to start of the cursor in Pro Tools. If we go to the end here, and I hit S, that is trim clip to the end of the cursor. And then to get this part in the middle, I'll highlight from here to here, and I'll press Delete. Okay, so you could use strip silence, and we'll talk about strip silence in another tutorial, but I, I tend to just go through it like this. Um, one of the reasons is it doesn't really take me that long to get through this, even though this is 75 tracks. It is not too terribly long to get through it, um, and I tend to like to see all the edits that I'm making. It'll also make you a lot faster at editing, so it's actually good practice for editing in general okay so I'll go through the rest of this here and I'll just generally go track by track to get this another thing um, either be in a small grid mode I'm in a small increment here quarter notes or be in slip to do this slip is generally the best to be in to do this and you can have one hand on the mouse and the other hand on the keyboard as you're doing this and it makes it a lot quicker. Um, I'm talking, and I'm not usually used to talking while I'm doing this, but it gives you an idea how fast you can get going once you really start doing this. Okay, so um, I'm going to time lapse this because I know you don't want to watch me do this entire t entire thing, and you'll see uh, the difference here in the end. All right, here we are back again. And as you can see, I've edited all of these tracks all the way down through all of them. I got rid of a couple tracks because there was actually uh, no audio on those tracks. So that also helped as well. I got rid of some tracks we weren't using. So you can see there's large gaps where there's nothing playing at all in this song, which is going to save our speeds quite a bit here. So um, let's do a playback again from roughly the same spot that we did before. Um, and you can set it back if you want to set your um, your zoom, your vertical zoom back out after you're done, you can. So then this is more realistic of, of what it's like. That's the default positioning here. 
Okay, so let me do this right here and I'll play it and you'll see the disk speeds go up, but we're looking zoomed up to 29 and now it's settling 13, 15, somewhere in that area now. So this is a big, big difference. Um, it more than halved what we were doing for our disk activity, our disk access, our disk usage, so to speak. Um, so you could see this sort of thing is a simple thing that you can do, and you should do. It's definitely more organized looking as well. You can see where things start and end. You can also jump in here and edit. If you wish to edit further, that's entirely up to you. You see that there's some space here and here, and I can zoom in on this right here and edit here. Let me show you another keyboard uh, shortcut here. You can highlight from here to here, and you hit Command T, and it'll get rid of everything in front of it and behind it as well. Like this one gets rid of S again, gets rid of that. You can see how that actually works. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, this is number one of, of many. I'm going to do this every week, and uh, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.